Hello everybody, my name is Bobby Schijf. I'm from the Netherlands Commission for Environmental Assessment. And today I'm going to talk about environmental assessment and what that tool can mean for better planning in a conflict sensitive context. And I'm going to start off with two particular cases uh, from the recent news where you see different water users being pitted against each other around the proposal of a new water project. Here's an image from India, and you see here a, a public meeting uh, of people who are concerned about a proposed uh, water extraction project, extracting water for drink water, and the concerns here about whether enough water will remain to maintain ecological values, and also whether there will be enough water for farming. Another case from Chile. This is about a project, uh, a hydropower project uh, to generate electricity. And the concern here is that when the water is diverted for that hydropower project from the river, uh, then there will not be enough water left for tourism and recreation. And both articles mention environmental and social impact assessment, or ESIA, as a mechanism that could make a difference in managing uh, the conflict around water use in these two cases. In the Indian case, the complaint is that no ESIA has been done for the proposed water extraction project, and that in fact that process would be really helpful to understand the impacts and also to have a dialogue around the different solutions that there might be to manage the impacts of the project. If you look at the Chilean case, there was actually an ESI done, but the concern here is that it wasn't done particularly well. One aspect in which the ESI was uh, failing was that it didn't look at how water flow in the future would be affected by climate change. And that's already turning out to be a problem now because uh, the hydropower project is partially constructed and the company that's running it has recently filed for bankruptcy because the water flow is already lower than they had predicted and the project is now not economically feasible. So what is ESIA and how could it make a difference? ESIA is a process by which you look at what the interaction is going to be of a proposed project with the immediate surroundings. The starting point is the objectives of the project itself, but also what environmental and social policies or standards might uh, apply to the project. Those need to be taken into account. The ESI will look at impacts on people and impacts on the biophysical environment of the area. And this process is done together with stakeholders, stakeholders in the local communities, but also perhaps other government agencies that might have a role. Together, these stakeholders will take an integrated look at all the different impacts that the project can have, but also at ways in which those impacts might be managed. That includes looking at different alternatives to reach the project's object objectives, but that might have a lesser impact or be more sustainable. It's been in place now as an instrument, ESIA, for over 50 years, and most countries in the world have their own uh, requirements and procedures set out where an ESI will be tied into, for example, permitting uh, uh, and, and approval uh, decision-making. And you see here on the screen the different steps in the ESIA process, and each country will have a variation of these steps in their own procedures. Some countries have specific features, like for example the Netherlands. We have an independent commission that can look at the quality of the information and the process of an EIA, and that's the organization that I work for. By the way, on our website, we have a series of animations on each of the steps in this process, if you want to know more. Now, of course, at the project level, ESA is useful to manage impact, but there are issues around water use that need to be addressed at the strategic level, at plans that are made before projects are actually being uh, implemented. Now, for those types of plans, you can also go through similar project, but then of process, apologies, but then it's called SCA, Strategic Environmental Assessment. And the application of SEA is growing and more and more around the world. And I'm going to take you through a case of uh, an SEA example just to show you why this instrument is becoming more popular and what kind of added value it can have to planning process. Let's have a look at a case of an SEA that was done for catchment planning for the upper Niambohongo catchment in the country of Rwanda. You see a map of Rwanda on the screen next to me. The yellow area represents the upper Niambohongo catchment. This catchment uh, houses about 1.2 million people. It's rich in water, there's a lot of precipitation. And as you can see, there's differences in elevations in this area, making it suitable for hydropower. There's already some hydropower there and there's potential for more. But there are, of course, also other uh, water uses dependent on, uh, on the water in the catchment. There's rain-fed agriculture, agroforestry, uh, some mining. 
Um, so then in the future, those different water uses need to be managed well. And there's also, as you can see in the image here, some issues. For example, a big problem is the sedimentation, which is the result of high erosion uh, in the area. And the sedimentation is leading to problems both in hydropower generation, but also for drink water. So it was decided to prepare a, a catchment plan for the area to manage these different water users and to address the problems that are there. And to do this uh, with a tailor-made SEA approach as part of the planning process. So it was not a separate uh, procedure for SEA, but the different SEA steps were integrated into the planning process. So they could inform the planning process when information was needed and also so there was no doubling up on any efforts. If you want a little bit, a little bit more detail on the process itself, uh, we have a, a case description of a couple of pages that's on our website. What did this SEA approach actually uh, add to the catchment planning process? Two elements I will highlight. For one is, because an SEA was undertaken, the whole planning process was very participatory. There was a task force set up at the very start, consisting of local stakeholders and government stakeholders, and they were involved throughout. And then at several particular moments in the SEA and planning process, there was additional consultation with local communities or other interest groups. Another element that the SCA added was the focus and comparison of alternative planning options. In this case, for the catchment plan, it was different combinations of measures to store water, to manage erosion, but also different ways in which you could allocate the water to different users in the future. And this combined SCA and planning process led to a catchment plan uh, which is widely supported. There's a range of measures in there, such as the construction of terraces to reduce erosion. There's a water allocation prioritization that's been agreed on, all of which are widely supported uh, by all the different stakeholders who were part of the process. The participatory pro approach also helped set up the institutional uh, arrangement for the implementation. So the different actors that have a role in implementing the plan, they understand their role better and also how they uh, coordinate with others. This SCA has served as an inspiration for a manual for future catchment uh, planning in Rwanda, and I hope you find some inspiration in there as well. And if you want to know more, please go to our website and you'll find some background information. Thank you. Thank you.